when all beside a vigil keep the west asleep the west asleep alas and well mayor and we while college she lies in slumber deep their leg in plain Smile fair and free, made rocks their guardian chivalry. Sing all oh, that man learn liberty from crashing winds and lashing seas. For oft times in old colors band. To triumph there died each common clan, and fleet as deer the Normans ran through cold slip pass and other hand, and later times saw deeds as brave and glory guards clan records grave. Sing all oh, they died their land to save at Ockram slopes and Shannon's waves. And if when all have vigil keep, the West is asleep, the West is asleep, alas and well. Mayor and we, while Connacht she lies in slumber deep. But hark a voice like thunder speaks, the west awake, the west awake. Sing o For we'll watch till death for our It's a real privilege uh, to do this for Mara. Um, her two great loves were Komogi and, and the Republican movement. And she was a character. You know, for those of us who knew her, knew her well. In Belfast, we took her as one of our own. But of course, she was South Armada the backbone. And her last uh, public appearance, I think, was in Holly Hanna. And she said that when our backs were to the wall in Belfast, you could always rely on South Armagh and the Oglock on South Armagh and she never forgot where she came from. When Mary was a young girl, she, she went to Liverpool. I think she was only 16 years of age. And then from there to Dublin and then up into Belfast and uh, got deeply involved in the GAA. And through a mutual friend, met Jimmy. Jimmy, of course, I think he must have liked it, but he was permanently in jail. And it must have, uh, it must have been something to be rare in that family. Where are you going this weekend? I'm sure, where did they ever go but up to a jail for years? And every decade, I think Jimmy was in jail. And Murray raised the five children who are here today. And, uh, and she made a hell of a good job on them. Well, I'm not so sure about Jamie, but the rest of them aren't too bad. <laughs> it's a measure of just uh, what sort of a person she was. When you know how a community feels about someone. Remember the Falls curfew where there were people in the Falls Road were hemmed in by the, by the Brit forces. And Murray led a, a deputation of women down the... Down the the Falls Road with lorry loads of bread and 
prom loads of bread. I think the proms were used for more than bread on the way out, though. There's an awful lot of uh, strange-looking things in the proms going back up the road, I can tell you. And she was at the forefront of everything. And she could be prickly, too. Many the argument I had with Mary. And uh, you didn't win too many arguments with that woman. But when I met a lot of people who were in jail with her, you know, the, the girls in the jail in Armagh, they just ate lays, Mary. She was like, she was a great force, a great dynamo, a permanent energy. She was a great public speaker. She was um, very active in the PDF and anything to do with prisoners, anything to do with the Republican movement. And she was very, very clear vision of what what this was about. Many a time she talked about when peace would come. And one of the things she said, and it's very up today, and uh, the leadership of this movement would ask for the same thing. She said, when peace comes, that will be the challenge. And everybody has to put their, their shoulders to the wheel and do the very best they can. Because she knew that we could win the war all right, but it would be so easy to lose the peace. And we're not in the business of losing, we're in the business of winning, but we can't win without the people. I just feel so privileged to be able to speak about Mary and, and to, be, to be here today. And I'm sure the family here today are very proud that 30 years later, it's like yesterday that, you know, I can see her face, I can hear her voice, you know, the things she said and the way she got a crowd going. Of course, that's why she got herself in jail. Sometimes she didn't know when to stop. And uh, I just wish Mary was here today to see the results of what her and her comrades set out to do all those years ago. She was so committed, had such conviction, never had a thought of failure. You know, a lot of our people, their heads go down. Oh, isn't it terrible? The DUP won't agree to this, or the Brits won't agree to that. Mary would have laughed at that. She said, well, as long as we know what we're doing, as long as we don't lose sight of where we're going, then everything will be all right at the end of the day. And I believe that too. We do know where we're going. Freedom is looking at us, staring us in the face. And we've won the war. We mustn't lose the peace. Thank you very much. Maura was a, an activist. She was a born organiser, she was a brilliant orator and could rouse her, as I'm sure a lot of people here on the Falls Road would remember, some of her speeches that were said right along this whole road. And she was great at organising, she was involved in the campaigns for anti-internment campaigns. All of those issues, Maura was one of the people that led them. She led the curfew down the Falls Road here and pushed past the British Army just at this corner here, right down into the heart of the Falls to break the curfew. She was a mother and loved her family and, and loved them all. She loved her country, but she was also a born <coughs> wit. And I remember one time we were down at an art, an, a, a art colony in Dublin, and we were in this hotel and the guardies surrounded it. And we had, uh, well, we had Rory there and we had Dave O'Connell, and we tried to disguise them to get them out past the guardie. And I remember Maura coming running down the stairs and she said to me, how do you disguise Bugs Bunny? <laughs> and I looked at her and I says, Bugs Bunny, and it didn't register with me at first how she meant. And I says, I don't know, Maura, you may cut his ears off or something and send them out. But we did manage to get them out. Maura was that type of person. She had a sense of humour, a dry wit. And uh, I really, really appreciated uh, being here today to, do, to be part of this unveiling. She was also a very strong woman in the fact that she organised the women within Sinn Féin. Sometimes we were classed as second-class citizens, as you know, Jerry might be fighting hard for it. Maura was the instigation of organising and helping move the women's department on and promoting women within our organisation and within Sinn within Féin. She was especially, especially fond of the youth and would be delighted to see so many young women being part of our organisation now. I think that she herself would be standing up here clapping them and wishing them well and saying, there's a place for all of you here. And especially you young women, there's a place for you to play and a role for you to play. And I think Maura's last words would be to say, please take up that role, play that part, 
help us get our United Ireland because you can do it and especially you young women out there. Thank you very much. A rebel heart, a rebel heart, from Tain to thraldom free, be prouder still, for good or ill, this rebel heart in me. I've read my country's checkered page. I've sang her deathless songs, I've yearned her woes. From age to age I burn to right her wrongs. And when I saw to alien laws, she'd never bend her knee, awoke and grew. For ooh, or ooh, this rebel hardened me. A rebel heart, a rebel heart, from pain to thraldom free, be prouder still. For good or ill, this rebel. Heart in me. A for the so what are you going to do about the ending of special category status which the government has just announced? Uh, when the prisoners take whatever stand they take, whatever the provisional Republican prisoners stand, we will stand firmly behind them and whatever they expect us to do, we will do it wholeheartedly because it was the provisionals who got political status for everybody and they are the people who will hold on to it. The late Jimmy Steele went on strip strikes, wore no clothes rather than wear a prison garb. Billy McKee went to the point of death and would have went on to death in 1972. There were other fellows with him on hunger strike and we had girls in Armagh prison at the same time, all for to get political status. They are political prisoners and how can the Conservative government in 1972 say they're political? In 1976 the Labour government says, oh, we'll, we'll take it off them. And if this is a conflict between the Labour and Conservative government, they should keep that in Westminster amongst themselves and leave our prisoners to us. You say that you're going to take whatever steps they ask you to take. Are you foreshadowing violence, Monodon? Uh, I wouldn't foreshadow anything and I don't prophesy. All I will say is that if Merlin Rees or anyone belonging to him comes into open conflict with the prisoners, then he will have the people outside to reckon with. And the prisoners are quite capable of taking a very strong attitude. He should remember the burning of Long Cash. It was the provisional Republicans who burned Long Cash. So you're saying we were going to have chaos in the prisons then? Uh, I don't know. I am only reminding him that the girls in our mad jail were able to take a governor hostage and they're only girls and hold hostages and wrecked that jail, that the boys in Long Cash burned that prison to the ground. And uh, if this is something that another red herring that he's going to drag for to take him away from the other chaos that he's in, he's only making more trouble for himself. Maura Drum is still an inspiration to me and to thousands of Republican men and women in Ireland and revolutionaries worldwide. Her fiery and pognant words resonate to this day and encourage Republicans to advance the struggle at every given opportunity. Her life was dedicated to the struggle for Irish freedom and 40 years ago this month, Mara, like so many others, paid the ultimate sacrifice for Irish freedom. Mara Drum remains an inspiration to all Republicans. As she said herself, we must take no steps backward. Our steps must be onwards. For if we don't, the martyrs that died for you, for me, for this country, will haunt us forever. Um, I first met Maura in 1976 when she came into jail. Um, I was only 18 and I think my Biden memory of her was that uh, she was a great storyteller. And uh, no matter who went to our cell, the door was always open. She was always willing to listen. One of the stories that I remember her um, telling was um, about her cooking and how um, she won Jimmy's heart. And she used to always tell us that 
it was her apple tarts that um, got her Jimmy, her man. <laughs> um, I was still on remand when the terrible news came that she was murdered in the matter, and I think everybody felt um, a terrible sense of loss. She was a great friend to us. She campaigned tireless for the prisoners. She was very forward, Maura, you know, she'd be very forward. Uh, she'd say to you, you know, where are you from? And I'd tell her I was down from around the Clanner and that. And she'd, just after the split, she'd say, well, tell me, are you a Provy or are you a Sticky? You see, and she would never have met me in her life before, but she would tease me about this. And she said, if you're not, you should be. You know, they've given all this thing going. But you wouldn't let on any, give me anything, because you know why I knew her and your name and that. I didn't didn't know a lot about her, and believe it or not, I was a very young, shy individual <laughs> at that time, and didn't say an awful lot. But she was she was a very very friendly individual. Um, she was very welcoming to anybody that that would have came to the house, as far as I had seen, and always had visitors. And uh, she had a very very good character, no matter how forceful you see her on her videos or that. You know, she was a very very pleasant person to be with. Uh, one of my earliest memories of Auntie Warren was going over to see her and she gave me my very first pair of jeans. So I was leaving Auntie Warren's with my jeans and of course the money for the shop as she always give you. And as you know, Silver City was right beside it. So as I walked out, these load of soldiers come running out to stop me uh, and they wanted me to open the bag. And Auntie Warren was still at the door so she's shouting, don't open the bag, don't open the bag, Margaret. Which made matters worse for me because they thought I was her Margaret. So I'm there for 20 minutes with them going, open the bag, and her going, don't open the bag. Eventually, I got to the shop. Um, but what the Brits didn't know was that, although I was afraid of them, I was far more afraid of Auntie Mora, so the bag never opened. 40 years on, we remember Myra Drum. A hero, an activist, a leader, a woman who held the position that I now hold. A woman in whose footsteps we follow. I wonder what she'd say if she was here with us today at this meeting of TDs and Senators, of MLAs, MPs, MEPs. I wonder what advice she'd give us as we move our struggle, her struggle forward. I know, I believe, that Myra would will us to victory. I think she's probably in this room with us willing us on to victory 40 years later and yet only a heartbeat away. We're here on Kelly's Road in Lower Killian in South Armagh, right on, on the border with Louth. And Kelly's Road is where Murray Drum was born and reared. The family home's a few hundred yards up here, up this boarding behind me. She was from a Republican family. She was murdered. She was in hospital. I I remember well. I have a vivid recollection. I was sitting on my bunk. I was writing at the time in Long Cash in one of the huts and writing for Republican News. And I actually wrote in the piece I was writing. We've just got her. We've just got news of the killing of Maura Drum. Shimmy, if I recall rightly. Her son was imprisoned at the time. Mora Og was in Armagh women's prison. She had to be released on parole. I remember afterwards reflecting to myself that the British state never came to Jimmy Drummer to the family. The RUC never came and told them that uh, Mora was killed. Never. Nobody ever knocked the door and said, we're investigating this. And my own strong view is that she was killed as a consequence of collusion. That, that those who uh, killed her were obviously tipped off that she was in hospital. So it's 40 years and you know, 40 years, it's a long time, but it's only a, a blink in reality, but it's very, 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 very appropriate that we uh, commemorate and that we mark Murrah's huge contribution to Republican activism and to the growth of, of Sinn Féin. And that we thank her family for giving her to us and for her great contribution. And we remember Jimmy as well, of course. So this is where she came from and from 
her, her birth in this beautiful part of the world and her growth into republicanism until the day she was cut down she remained just that a wonderful woman a role model and an outstanding republican a mother and a grandmother a wife and a sister as well Gunyani Gia Chakra Arhi